So here we are, three years on, and um, Bryden, Close, and the whole area where all these houses were are now completely gone and destroyed. Um, there's just the remaining, just over there in the distance, you can see there's just one little row, and all that's left on the end is just one house. But <clears throat> if you remember rightly, in the uh, the Forgotten Streets of Salford video that I did, all this here, these were just houses. Um, and we came here three years ago to document sort of the ending of the ending of the estate really. Um, it was heavily heavily involved this area with the riots, which um, the video sort of documents. Um, and it ended up ultimately shortly after them riots these all these houses that were here pretty much got tinned up and they, um, they torn them down but the reason why i came to film it wasn't just to sort of capture it on camera uh, before it went it was back in the day back in its heyday um, it was a brilliant little community and you're going right back but the messages that i got and um, the video did brilliant like it got over a hundred thousand views i think on uh, facebook and then it got over about 10k i think on on youtube but i was overwhelmed with the amount of people that shared their memories of this place and there was like parks on here and stuff and it was a tight tight-knit community now it was humbling it really was to sort of get the feedback off off the people that lived here and they all shared their memories but, like today, it is basically just, um, they must be getting ready to redevelop this whole area. But it was amazing, because some of the houses that we went in, you could still feel, even though they was all tinned up, you could just feel the energy in the houses. You know, you could feel the memories that, um, that have gone on, and this whole street was just thriving at one point. Look, I mean, there's even plant pots and stuff still down from people's houses. You know, bits of fencing. So this little bit where I'm going to take you now, this is the part of the video where we found this house. Now, obviously, it was, everything was boarded up, but this one house, when we went into the back of the garden, it almost looked like it was still pretty well kept. And you could just tell that somebody, whoever owned the house, you know, they took a lot of pride and... Um, it just made you, you could just imagine, in my head, I was getting like, hearing like voices of like, someone's nana and granddad that might have owned it, you know. Uh, because all the, all the houses that you could see, it was weird, it was like a ghost town, so you could just imagine every little thing that would have gone on in them houses. And it was as if you could feel the energy around there still. It was absolutely crazy. But this little bit where I'll take you now, I'll show you the exact spot where the garden used to be. Was it over here? This is the, this is the end. This is where the house was, and that was a path to the oh, there. where that conifer is. Oh yeah, yeah. They remember the trees. Yeah, 
So this is a path of walk down that carried it out. No way. And that's where the trees were. Wow. So that cat jumped out at them. Yeah. This was like the back garden then, wasn't it here? Yeah, the house at the end of here. This yeah, was like this the was the garden. garden. It was like a gate here, weren't they? Yeah. Popped me head around the corner because it was as if somebody still lives here, the garden. What does it feel? Feels like, like someone's still here. Let's have a look. So you've got all this sort of decaying, weather-beaten houses, and then look at this. They will close this gate. Do it a bit of justice, eh? Before they knock it down. It's just someone's uh, house, so you've got to respect it, you know what I mean? Crazy. Because this is where the ornamental trees was, look. The panic was at the bottom where the yeah. cat jumps out at you. No way. This is that garden there. Look. Oh, no way. Oh, there's that tyre turned out into a pump. Yeah, pump. that was in the garden, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow, so this was the actual little garden here then. Yeah, because if you remember, it had, um, had that the tables yeah. on the tree. Because there was something on the tree here, weren't there? Look at that. Something's been hung up on the, the tree. Now. Wow. The this little house, it was perfectly preserved, wasn't it, compared yeah. to everywhere else? Like we just walked into somebody's garden by mistake. Yeah. Said I felt like I'd walked into my nana's, mm. my nana and granddad's. Yeah. It's still all grass on it. Yeah, that is amazing that that's still there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that was in the video, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. So what you used to do then was uh, you get an old tyre, yeah? And you Stanley knife it in the middle and you peel it out and peel it out that way and it made like, made a, like a, a plant little, pot little. and you, fill it, you put a base <laughs> on it and put uh, soil in it. Sulfur plant pot. Yeah. Paint white. <laughs> God. I mean this place all round here, you know. So this way, all these streets here, that was all there. I remember it went that way, yeah. didn't it? And then the these were the gardens. Way, yeah, that's right. And then there was a row across there. But this is... Uh, it's crazy to think, isn't it, you know, these, where I'm walking now, I'm walking through someone's old house and these are memories for people. These were, uh, people lived and they died on these, these estates here, on these streets. You know, it, it's not really, the reason why I'm capturing this, obviously so, so we can look back on things and witness the stages and transitions of, uh, of places like this, but I'm also doing it so people don't forget and the memories for people too, because as much as it looks disastrous and it's basically just like scrubland in it now, it's still people's memories. People's li people lived here for 20, 30, 40 years maybe, you know, and it's them people that I'm trying to, trying to do this for because this, this meant everything to him. It might have meant nothing at the end to people, but for the older generation, it meant it meant the world to them. Crazy to think that all this down the side of me now here, and down the side here, were just rows of uh, houses that have all gone. But it's it's mad. Like when you walk past, you look down the lamp post, and you can see people's graffiti on it, and people name calling one another and that you know all the the memories of the kids when they would be playing on here and you write your name on the lamppost bits of little bits of graffiti in that but they're all still here and these are like echoes of um, echoes of the memories of this estate 
sad in a way because none of these um there was nothing wrong with any of the houses was there no they were solid weren't they yeah when you think back there was nothing wrong with them this is that little part we cut through yeah to, uh, to get to a dual close down here wasn't it yeah remember yeah yeah, because we came this way, didn't we? Yeah, we went through Bride into Edgeil, didn't we? Yeah. And, and, that was a, and that then was we cut work. through here, yeah. yeah. There was like an house with a painted England flag. That was here, wasn't it? Was it here? Yeah. Out here? Just there, wasn't it? Cause it? Oh, it was on that a beer wall, bottle here, wasn't it, remember? Yeah. yeah. Cherry B? Yeah. Yeah. Madness. It's weird, because when you actually look and you take a step back, you can see little trees like that just grew and these would have been in people's back gardens and now like the elements have totally consumed them but there's still like random um, remnants from people's houses like them little uh, plant pots and stuff like that sort of like a uh, it's weird isn't it because yeah you can still feel the yeah you know the energy the people that have walked on these streets you can still feel yeah, the the atmosphere and the memories that people will have had here. You've got like that ornamental tree there, like a yucca. Yeah. And that conifer there, you know what I mean? That would have been somebody's back garden. Yeah. And the street lamps are still up and the, the, the passageways, walkway. the walkways. Well, this walk this walk straight straight away through down to um, uh, what do you call it? Cross lane. Yeah. Like this. So as you can see. There's absolutely nothing left but this row of houses here and this one little house that you can see on the end that is defiantly going nowhere but this epitomizes what surviving Salford's all about because everything around here has been totally demolished but that house there have said no that's the house that said no we're staying <laughs> so they must own that out right but they even painted it as well, how cool is that? But all the houses around here and on Bride and Close and everything was just all tinned up like that, if you remember rightly. Um, but I just thought that little pink house there is a uh, epitomizes surviving Salford in a nutshell, really. But when the heart of a community stops beating, the repercussions can be devastating. Look, look, he knows he shouldn't be so TV, and I'd rather drive shout, shout at him and, and smack him. Need a move now. You You're When we think of who we are, we think about the past. A series of events that we've experienced throughout our lives. And it's those events over the course of our life that made us who we are today. The foundations and the people we met along the way. The streets that we walk upon today might be different. 
but the memories will never die. Many of the original pubs in Salford were purposely built off the back of the local hard-working people of the area. Textile mill workers, coal miners and the dockers working on the dockyards. And with the introduction of the Industrial Revolution, it took Salford to the next level. Salford expanded from a small market town into a major metropolis. The factories replaced the old thatched cottages that once sat on the sleepy pathways and the population soared from 12,000 people in 1824 to 70,000 people only 30 years later. Rows of back-to-back Victorian terraced houses and smoky chimney tops that chuffed away into the midnight sky set the landscape for a new era as the raindrops fell on the clog beaten cobbled streets of Salford. It almost sounds like the inspiration for a Lowry painting. But times were changing and the fast paced hard working men and women that had slaved away in the intense heat of the factories, deafened by the sounds of the spinning looms that reverberated and echoed around the streets, were parched by the dryness of the environment and the strains of life. They needed a release, and the pubs were laid welcoming with open arms. Hey, here he is, my favourite customer. Usual, is it, George? <coughs> yeah, please, Harry. Chuck us a packet of pork scratchings in two, pal. A water and all for the weary-eyed worker. But these pubs were more than just places to drink. Friendships were built from the elderly to the young. Laughter, jokes, smiles the backbone of communities. And when they close, there can be the demise of many. Salford was a hive for pubs. The Crescent, for example, an historic grade two listed pub, built way back in 1860, where it's believed that Frederick Engels and Karl Marx once pulled up a seat next to each other and quaffed a few ales as they glared out the pub window and discussed the revolution and the theory of communism. To the ambient sound of the crackling, roaring fire behind them and the pattering of the rain as it tapped on the glass window. Now, it's heartbreakingly clinging onto the side of the crescent built by the hands of a bygone era but destroyed by the people the area is rapidly becoming a graveyard for old historic pubs the closure of the crescent the unicorn the beehive and even the church pub that stood on that one piece of land for over 200 years. Aesthetically, it's in excellent condition, but it was closed by the brewery due to not having the budget to repair the building. And like I said before, when the heart of a community stops beating, the repercussions can be devastating. I'm not like trying to highlight all the faults and stuff like that. I'm, I'm literally trying to capture places like these before they go. 
and the church pub being one of them. Now the church, I used to drink in here when I was younger and um, when I lived round here and I've got nothing but great memories of that pub. It was brilliant. Um, but when you close these little pubs that are around here, when you, when you actually sit and count them, how many have gone, it's, it's a bit of a travesty because these places are communities for people too. They're much more than just a pub. They bring people closer together. You've got people that are in their 80s having drinks with people in the 20s and there's just constantly banter going on and, and there's stuff like that and you just think when they're close stuff like this you know it, it sort of rips the art out of the community and they said that that pub I was reading um, online and they said that the pub the people that own the pub the actual building they're closing it because it's it needs too much uh, repair work doing to it which is a load of bull because I'm looking at this place now and there's nothing wrong with it it's been re-roofed like in the last 10 years I'd say there's nothing actually wrong with that pub and all I can think of is that they're going to redevelop this area and all this bit and they're probably going to sell that land and bulldoze it but that is a historic pub it's really really old and it was named after this here the church which has been there since day one so you know when you're closing a place like this and you're closing these pubs these are communities these are the heartbeat of communities and the wonder why places go downhill um, and by closing stuff like this you know that's one of the reasons why Gradual decline of your traditional, old school pub is now sadly becoming a thing of the past. Eradicated from societies. Without taking any care or consideration of what these places meant to the people of the area. Some of your old school pubs that Manchester has to offer have been revamped rather than demolished into swanky new bars and paying tribute to its history, breathing a new lease of life back into the old pubs. But sadly, the powers that be seem to think that Salford will be a better place without them. Is it the last orders for the pubs of Salford? Or will we be allowed to get one last round in? I suppose only time will tell. So I'm on the other side of Salford now, and I'm in Clifton. And this part of Clifton's a bit of a blind spot, I'd say. Um, but I've come here for two reasons. One, I've come to highlight these houses here. Now, these houses have stood the test of time and they've been refaced. Um, but originally, they was um, the houses of the miners that worked locally. So all the, all the miners that worked down the mines and um, in the local collieries, they actually all lived in them houses with their families. So it's, it's mad to think that they're still up after all them years. Uh, but like I say, I'm here for two reasons. One for that, and one of them is just behind me in them woods. So this wouldn't be a surviving Salford video if there wasn't a little hidden gem thrown in there, would it? Now, where I am at the minute in Clifton, I'm sort of scouring around in the woods. Um, but this, this area where I am, it never used to be the woods. Um, this was home to something that has been lay forgotten for going on 50 odd years now, 50 plus years. And um, like, it, <clears throat> as you can see, the elements have totally took over here. Um, and what actually was here is unrecognizable. You would never know. Um, but this is the actual site of a little old train station that has been forgotten and abandoned 
like I say, for going on 50, about 54 years now. So basically it's my mission to revive it, to present it to you and show you the remnants of the little lost station of Clifton Junction. Clifton Junction Station was opened in 1847. When it was introduced, it became a relief to the local workers of the area, as they had a means to commute to work. Many local coal miners and textile mill workers would have used this line back in the day. The main access to the station was from Rake Lane, that led down towards a triangular plot of land in the fork of the junction. It provided many useful commutes, including a journey that would take you over the iconic 13 arches. Over the span of its life, the station made the papers on a number of occasions, and one being the heroic story of James O'Connor, a pointsman who worked at the station and back on the 22nd of August 1877, James was presented with five pounds by the directors of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Company as recognition for his presence of mind in preventing what could only be described as a catastrophic collision that would have surely killed everybody on board. A train from Chatburn to Manchester was parked up and stationed at Clifton Junction, but accidentally on the same line leaving Salford was the Berry and Bakeup Express, and it was flying down the tracks at top speed. Packed to the rafters with passengers, inevitably destined for a head-on collision with the parked up train at the station. But the quick thinking pointsman James O'Connor acted fast as he set the signals against the express and with almost incredible swiftness turned the train onto the Bolton line making the trains pass each other at the very point of collision all members on board would have surely have lost their lives that day and perished in the disaster if it wasn't for the precision and quick thinking of James. A hero to many people that day. But James's act of heroism has sadly been forgotten in the chapters of our past until now. Long may he be remembered as a true hero and may his story and the lives that he saved never be forgotten. So I've literally just come sliding down this sort of embankment here and I felt the ground change <clears throat> and underneath my feet I've just noticed there's lumps of old coal from back when this place was Clifton Junction Station now all this that's underneath me you know the old coal would have obviously have been used to stoke the steam engines and stuff that would have come through here but this is just totally unrecognizable you would never have known that this place was an old train station <clears throat> let's just um try and make our way further in and you'll start to see signs of old life old brickwork that's still on the floor 
It's everywhere. This is amazing. I'm not too sure how far it goes on. But basically, there's old remnants of uh, the past here. Money back bottle. That's what it says on it there. Hold that up. See if you can make it out. It says money back bottle. How cool is that? And there's more. These look like old LucasAid bottles, maybe. Proper old school LucasAid bottles. Wow. Now, somewhere hidden in here, I do believe there's a subway, an old subway that used to run underneath the train line. And um, it was a cut through route, really, to Clifton Hall. But like I say, I've not been here for years. And um, the elements have well and truly taken it over. So trying to navigate round here is pretty difficult, to be honest. I'm just hoping I can locate the subway. It literally is something like out of like Jumanji in it. <laughs> it's just totally, totally f like forgotten. And. Um, like I said before, the elements have just totally took over this place. Oh, we keep marching on. There oh, it is. Ow. Wow. Ow. <laughs> so ladies and gents, this is a survivor. Look at that. Wow. Now this was the old subway that used to correspond and cut through, I think under the train line, so the train would run along. Um, and this was a cut through that you could take. Now, I mean, look at this here. We've even got the old markings on the wall from back in the day. I think after all these years, this little hidden station, the remnants of this station, is still here. It's still surviving. And it's been forgotten and abandoned. And that's why the big corporate places haven't, haven't managed to get their hands on this just yet. But it's still here after all these years. I mean, it's pitch black in here. And the sound just completely cuts off. That old newspaper too. It's only from 2014. It looks a lot older, doesn't it? Wow. So it's been backfilled here. So, like I say, it could have, well, obviously it, it ran further on. Whether the tunnel continued and carried on and carried on, um, but I do believe that it was a cut through from Clifton, Clifton Hall. Um, look at that, just spotted on the floor. An old saw. Wow. How amazing is that? That's got to be a, a good 50 year old or something, hasn't it? Could have been the old platform controllers in his, uh, his little maintenance room. Doing a bit of touch up while he's waiting for trains and that to pass the time. Incredible, isn't it? Bits of old pipe work, old bottles, old bricks. These would have been the original bricks from the um, from when this was built from the station. But just 
look at that, isn't it amazing? Look at the little like beveled arch ceiling. Can you just imagine some of the conversations that would have gone on in here? You know, people probably having a little sig, waiting for the train, huddled under here. Absolutely. You know, it could have been freezing, it could have been raining and they were just seeking a bit of refuge while they were waiting for the train. It's unbelievable and it's still standing. You know, 50 plus years. I'm sure there's some of you must have remembered this station being open. So if you do, like I said before, drop a comment below um, and tell me what you remember of it. But I'm just surprised at how much is still here. You know, these are the, this is the reason why I'm highlighting these things because it's things like this, a little lost train station um, hidden in the woods. That is an absolute pearl, it's a gem and it's a piece of history that has dug its heels in defiantly and it's still standing after all these years. How incredible is that? And nature's tried to reclaim it all back and it's done a pretty good job to be honest because it's, I was struggling to find it myself. Um, but it blows my mind, it actually blows my mind. You know, the people that constructed that the people that laid them bricks. Maybe I think too deep into it. I'm sure I do. But the hands that built them and the hands that placed the stone, them, them, you know, the people that did that are long gone now. But their work is still here. And it blows my mind. <laughs> and long may it rain. So this subway here actually ran under the line. Um, so in theory, across here, this should be the platform um, you should be able to see the platforms at either side, but like I say, in the middle here now, it looks like it's just totally, totally overgrown. So we'll try our best to see if we can make it out. Right, so where I am now is I'm directly above the subway. So the tunnel cut through the subway is right directly below my feet. And um, this here, this is one side of the platform. And if I just set you over here, this is the other side of the platform. So basically, we're actually on the track right now of what would have been Clifton Junction Station. Amazing. I mean, it's it's crazy to, to actually see. When you actually dig, oh, when you dig a bit deeper, you start finding remnants that are still here from all those years ago. Look at that. It's even got the original paintwork on it from back in the day. These are like relics from the past that have just been left since the day it closed in 1966. All that time it's just been sat here. It's like a sleeping giant. And you come to somewhere like this years and years on and you know, the, the, the sort of relics of the past are still scattered about all over the floor still. And they might be covered they might be covered in um, in moss and stuff like that and and the plants and the flowers have grew over them but they're still here and to think how busy it must have been a busy station at one point in time you know for it to warrant an actual station it must have been pivotal to the area and I bet it was used for possibly like the miners and stuff like that maybe going from area to area jobs you know it must have been used for commuters um possibly could have even been used for like you know cargo over the years maybe you know but like i said before if you remember this station being open or you remember anything about it just drop a comment below i'd be fascinated to know know your memories so i'll just stop to have a bit of a look at my footage and uh, sort of stood here in silence and it almost, it's got a weird feeling because it almost feels like this place should be bustling. And you can, in the sort of in your mind's eye, you can imagine this was a place that was so, so busy. And all of a sudden it's not, and it's sort of ghostly, if you know what I mean. Um, it's pretty, pretty strange because there's obviously signs of that there was life here 50 plus years ago. Um, dating back to the 1800s. So, 
when you just sort of stop and have a bit of a listen. It feels a bit sort of, uh, I wouldn't say eerie, but it feels like you can, you can feel the energy that's been here in the past. You can tell there's been something here and it's been, it's been used heavily over the years. And like you say, everywhere you look on the floor, from an old bottle to an old remnant of a brick, to seeing the the platforms, the old platforms where they would have been, to seeing the subway. You know, when you start actually stop and have a think, it's mad because people actually used this and commuted and used it every single day for it just to stop like that. One day it just closed and that was it. But these are the places that people would have spent, maybe someone could have worked here for over 30, 40 years, you know? Grandparents and great-grandparents and our ancestors that we don't even know might have worked here all those years ago and spent every single day coming here. So I believe they leave a bit of an imprint after after you've gone. And I think when you spend a lot of time without getting too deep, getting deep again, aren't I? <laughs> uh, but without getting too deep, you can feel, you know, the energy and uh, people people use this and frequented it quite a lot. The power of the past stares defiantly in the face of the future and it won't lie down until its story's been told, the streets are Salford, the pubs of the past. Even the crumbling remnants of old train stations. I've just noticed there's lumps of old coal from back when this place was Clifton Junction Station. They've been protected by nature. Protected, hidden out of sight from the wrecking ball that inevitably awaits them from the unsung heroes whose courage and bravery have been lost in the chapters of time to the friendships we've built throughout our lives to our loved ones You sadly might not be here today and their homes that held nothing but beautiful memories and great times from an era that has sadly slipped away so the next time that you see a remnant of the past spare a thought for what it once stood for Look at this, I've just found here. Peeking through the ground seems to be the old train line. Wow. How amazing is that? That would have prob you know, ran all the way through here at one point. Unbelievable. That's an absolute little gem that of a find. Because it's story 
might just mean a lot more than what the initial eye perceives. Because they're surviving. They are surviving. Solving. So I've come back a week later just to uh, take my dad round it, just to show him this little survival. Uh, but we just stopped for a quick brew. And as usual, my dad's pulled out the ace here with a blinder. Morrison's finest. Not heard that for a bit, have we? <laughs> yeah, I brought my own cup. Have you not got another cup for it now? No, well, I've got spare. Yeah. I'm for some in that. Hey! <laughs> Under your bag was ever. Go on. Oh, Cheers. Calls it, but he wants it. 